Uh, I've been asked to speak specifically on the European Capital of Culture project, and I know that there are many Brits in the room uh, who are avidly watching and are very interested in this scheme. And I don't doubt that uh, many of you are going to be wanting to pick our brains about how we've done it. Uh, because we are doing it quite well, uh, and people are saying so. So we're rather pleased about that. Uh, and, I, and it has, I think, a lot to do uh, with the mentality that I located when I came here. Now, if you ask people why they want to become uh, a European <coughs> capital of culture, invariably they will talk about tourism, that's increasing tourism into the city. Now talk about uh, generating business, enhancing your business opportunities, growing your business for the city, etc. At the end of the day, it's all about money. They want to make a more prosperous place, they want people to come into the space, and they want people to use the space in creative and interesting kinds of ways. They actually want to build a brand of city. Now, a lot of the time, when people bid in to be a European capital of culture, they shouldn't. It's actually not that easy. You, you need to almost be sort of prematured uh, to, in fact, endure uh, what can be a, a very arduous, a rather costly, uh, and a very resource-needy uh, project. It's a very long process. It takes a long time to decide to bid in, to get your bid up, to go through the process of assessment, etc. But it is absolutely worth doing. And as I tell a lot of people all of the time, it doesn't matter if when you bid in, you don't get the bid up, because you've actually started a process. And one of the things that I have learned very substantially from this is that there is never any waste in working on culture. That is what I call cultural composting. If you do the work, <coughs> you lay down the cultural nutrients for the future. So even if the bid does not go forward, you've actually started the thinking, the processes that will lead you to somewhere else. Before you know it, you will have grown a bunch of volunteer activities that are robust enough to stand the test of time through that cultural composting process. However, here in Aarhus, we're very, very fortunate Things. very fortunate indeed, to have already a portfolio of capacity here that makes this a very, very energetic, very lively, very active, <coughs> very, very potential kind of place. And the two previous speakers, Jakob and Stephen, have actually detailed that for you uh, in a number of ways. And you'll see a couple of repetitions here. What the European Capital Culture Scheme really is about beyond those things I said before, is about building cultural capital, about building skills and enhancing ambitions, about tapping into, and this is, it's been mentioned twice, most important, tapping into the DNA of a place. No point doing a European capital of culture scheme if you ignore the DNA that's already in a place. It will seem uh, inauthentic, will not seem genuine, and it will never ever get the kind of traction that you need from your citizens, who are at the base of everything, the people who will own your capital of culture scheme. Don't take them with you, you're going nowhere fast. You've got to actually recognise what is in the city and what the city can deliver. And some cities are not ready to do that, and some cities are. Orcus is one of them. We talk about the year as being a catalytic event catalyst for change and to create a new set of mindsets. To get those interconnecting cogs wheeling around in people's minds and connecting the dots. Actually, in a sort of way, that's my job. As an outsider, I think I also had a highly privileged way of coming in and having an overview uh, quite quickly about what the city could do for itself. And I became a sort of matchmaker, if you like. So still talking to this one and that and saying perhaps you could work with this person and this. And this week, actually, is a kind of culmination of one of those processes. Uh, when I first came into the city, Stephen, my colleague here, said to me, what are you going to do about architecture? Everywhere I went, someone said, what are you going to do about architecture? What are you going to do? Uh, and I said, well, to me, you know, architecture is a hero in our year. And of course, we're going to be doing something incredibly important with it. 
And then it was a wonderful, a beautiful synergistic moment when the urbanists came to visit, when I could see that we could also start to talk about the diversity of design and designing for special needs and communities, where we could get a conversation that involved the students in the architecture school uh, and all of these things that are coalescing this week, this only week, uh, in what is a whole year of cultural activity that puts a lens upon the city itself and sends its messages out from the city to beyond and shares it with all. So it's about tapping into a mindset that is already here, but reactivating that mindset to go around and start to interconnect in different kinds of ways. I view this city as a kind of organism. And I think actually when you look at it, you can already sense that it's not one of those uh, urban places that just popped up and is a little bit desultory and somehow inhumane in a way. It has a soul, it has a spirit. And I think of it as a space that has a lot of uh, metaphoric and symbolic load. Uh, when you know that, you can actually begin to tap into that DNA. And then you notice that the symbolism of that DNA actually start to uh, s s send itself out through actual physical uh, operations and objects. DNA is often described in this rather beautiful spectrum of colours in the sort of scientific world. And uh, here it starts to represent a set of circles that you've already seen. Stephen has shown some of them, uh, and you will recognise them as we go through. But one of the people in the audience before asked something about uh, uh, the origin of things. 1815 or thereabouts, this city was actually inhabited. And as you can see, its natural form was a circle. This actually is really rather important to know because here we have circles everywhere. And those of you who heard me the other day, I apologize, I might repeat myself a little bit. But if you go into our absolutely glamorous, gorgeous, iconic town hall, you will encounter this beautiful circular spiral staircase designed by uh, Arnie Yuppelson. <coughs> and you will also encounter a lot of stairs that go upwards. Circles and stairs are actually, I think, something that characterises this city uh, absolutely. And what may be interesting for you to actually recognise is the asymmetry that goes with that, the circle and the stair. Uh, and that is, I think, a very deliberate comment, symbolism, of what actually happens here in this space. Lots of stairs that take you up and up, keep your body active, keep your mind fit, very therapeutic space that's being developed, but also very aspirational. This is a very aspirational little city. Compact though it is, bounded by a forest on either side of itself, it still wants to actually uh, progress. It wants to progress, but it also wants to hold its form of thinking in the round and its D and A. Here's its chamber of decision making, again, in the round. This is a community that discusses a lot of things, and I think from Jakob's introduction, you can already sense that nothing much happens here unless there is a collectivity that drives it. There has to be a consensual circle of agreement, and there has to be a collective movement of will and intent. You cannot actually proceed along without that, and of course, that is a highly valuable thing to have in a city. That close proximity of decision making with the close proximity of <coughs> ambition and the close proximity of care of the <coughs> others and self, which is enclosed in that circle. Here you see it symbolically related to the, your panorama, uh, a beautiful iconic moment. But the thing that I would address is not only the circularity of it, it's also the transparency of it. This is a city that also wants to see itself, understand itself, and actually talk to itself, <coughs> and never, ever, ever be very clandestine to itself. When you have a city like that, you have a safe city, you have a, a city of, uh, I think, compassion, you have a city that grows together, and that is extremely important. There they are, the decision makers up there looking down upon a city that they're trying to actually nurture. We like to look out here. We are Vikings, after all. Oh, incidentally, you might have realised I'm not a Viking. Uh, I am a half Viking, actually. I'm, I'm from Melbourne, and I'm, I'm very disappointed not to see a red dot on the Melbourne spot on your map. What? Uh, because, you know, like Melbourne is a good city. Um, Liverpool, up there on the top. We like to look out here, we're Vikings. Uh, 
This is one of our strategies, of course, of keeping the Norwegians at bay. Uh, we don't like it when they come in. And so way back when we set up all sorts of uh, lookouts, this one's at Calo B, if you have the time and you're still here, go on down that direction. It's absolutely beautiful part of my region, which is beyond August as well. But we like to look out. We like to see what's coming toward us. Uh, and we used to set up a fire beacon so that we could actually predict uh, the arrival of, you know, uh, invaders, etc., and clobber them, uh, which we did quite successfully. Uh, but beyond that, we're quite friendly. Uh, and, and, and we do have a sort of more peaceable sort of uh, way of dealing with things now. But as Stephen showed you, this, this symbolic referencing of the circle continues all the time. I noticed it in your slide from Geller up as well. There it is reasserting itself always. We want to see ourselves in a variety of ways from the top and from the middle. Here's this gorgeous thing. Uh, we took this on summer. So many people out there seeing their city to a new, uh, in a new aspect. The minute you take someone out into the sea, even rather, sh you know, in a shallow sort of sense, you actually get a different perspective on space. When you come up into this building, you get a different perspective on space. If you go up into uh, the other places that have been built in the last three years, Stephen, <coughs> you get a different aspect of space. It really is absolutely delightful. Oh, sorry, that was a repetition. Sorry, that's a repetition. Recently has arrived on our horizon, and this is not a project of mine, but it's extremely welcome into our year all the same, the selling cantilever <coughs> across the walking street. This has forever changed that view of the street, the thing that is happening above you, where all of these people are daring themselves to go out into the cantilever I, of course, they stole this from Melbourne. Uh, a wonderful group of architects, uh, Jacob Corker Marshall, can to leave at first and did a swimming pool, but that's the end of the day. Uh, you know, this is absolutely brilliant, and I dare you to go up there, stand at the very edge there, where you will have a complete transparency, where people can see you and you can see them, uh, forming a circle, actually. This is what happens, because it's a natural inclination. Uh, people sort of hover to the edge, you, as you would. But it is really absolutely brilliant. It is a, actually a good example of the way in which the cultural capital scheme has inspired a retailer, who I must say is also a, a high, high-hitting citizen uh, in this city, has inspired a retailer to actually join in and make a landmark for the city that becomes iconic, a must-do, a must-see, a must-participate in, and still holds the ethos of transparency, bravery, and outward lookingness. A new symbol, we're now pushing out. We're going round, we're going up, and we're pushing out. It's really absolutely fantastic, and there you can see the street. It's also a place for entertainment, because there's never anywhere in all that you can go that hasn't already been uh, pre-thought as a preparation for entertainment, music, gatherings, etc. Uh, it is a highly, highly communal kind of space to work in. This is a, another outlook that has been made in the last couple of years, another way of going up, uh, and this one that Stephen already mentioned. Now, what I love about this project, apart from anything else, is I think it's actually a bit of a thumbs down to going too high. You want to go up, you want to see above, but you want to claim some space. You want to actually you know, colonize a bit of historical fabric before it's too late, uh, and you actually want to give a bit of a sense of what is the limit of height. You know, this is actually a medieval town. There is a new ring around it. There will be further rings and concentric circles that go out from it. But it's important to keep a heart. It's important to keep it close to the people. As we heard yesterday from Jan Gell and Rob Adams, you know, spaces need to be uh, places for people. You need to actually still feel that community around you. And I think metaphorically, symbolically, a lot of these things that are going up are also a little bit, bit like the trees that they put on the top of the end of the building project saying, this is the limit. We don't actually want to necessarily go much higher than this. We still want to keep our heads above water. Yes, we've got these incredibly glamorous uh, photogenic projects that have uh, now become part of the city branding for sure. And they are, for certain, absolutely inspirational. But as Stephen mentioned, that's what it was like about three years ago. Now, if you look down uh, in the harbour there, you'll five minutes, thanks. I agree on time. I'm always good like that. Uh, <laughs> what we've seen in the last two years is what we call a kind of mushrooming effect of what I often refer to as a dispiriting verticality. 
we really do have to be, and, and I'm glad that the mayor is actually here in the midst of this week and listening to everybody and listening to these talks and, and being prompted to continue to think about these civic issues because we cannot afford and we must not allow uh, the sort of dispiriting development to occur which creates those windy corridors, the lack of amenity that we hold so dear in this city and which is really, I think, marking us as a place for people to come to, locate to, uh, build the prosperity of, etc. It's quite remarkable to me that in such a short time in living here, I have seen this part of the city literally transform, all completely filled up just about. A couple of uh, times it's been mentioned, but it's worth mentioning again, that hu the human is right at the very centre of planning thoughts here in uh, Denmark. I think even more so here in Oaks, <coughs> which thinks greatly, strongly, deeply about how to keep that community collected, how to keep them within the circle space. Uh, it is, I think, a very, very fine uh, idea that humanity goes into the middle of the plan of thought. Uh, we can see it also infiltrating the architectural thought, where we see a very particular DNA of building here in Denmark, where uh, communities are built from within, and space is actually being now cohabited, co-used, 24-7, uh, in ways that uh, means that buildings are not unuseful in the dark hours, that they have multiple uh, citizens <coughs> inside them, and a greater interaction, which of course is absolutely great. Yes, we have grown tourism, yes, we have grown business, and yes, we are bringing in a bit of money for the city, and that's all good. Uh, we have, in fact, I think, fulfilled one of the charters of the EU scheme, and that is to rebrand ourselves uh, and make ourselves feel more European, too. To reach out, to cantilever uh, away from just our sort of small mindset to a bigger, larger mindset. Uh, it's a great scheme. If you're from a city that's going to bid in, good luck, as they say. Uh, the rewards are absolutely manifold. They're totally tangible. Uh, it is a thrilling journey, uh, and I would recommend it to anyone because it is, as I say, cultural composting at its best. Attend to the DNAs, leave the old ways, go to the new, and then make some fabulous projects which actually inspire your citizenry and give them tangible metaphors and symbols for what your aspirations are. Welcome to Aarhus. I hope you have a great time. It's a fantastic city, and I'm just paid to say that, but I really do think it's <laughs> <laughs>